Hello there and welcome to the Broads. I'm one of the navigation rangers, there's 11 rangers and we've got eight of these launches and we patrol. If you see us about, give us a wave. We're there to keep you safe, make sure you have an enjoyable time, make sure nobody speeds and, look, and you respect the place, but basically to help you. We also work with the Coast Guard, should anything go wrong, and also a special police unit called Broadsbeat, who investigate crimes and do joint patrols with us. So don't be afraid of us. We've got a blue light on there and a uniform, but do give us a wave, give us a chat, and tell us how you're enjoying the Broads. If we can do anything for you, we definitely will. While we're here, we'll just mention the fishermen that are over here. Angling's allowed on our 24-hour moorings, but you must give way to boats. The idea is these particular moorings we pay for out of navigation money and they're there for boats to moor. There's other places where anglers can use but we invite anglers on here if it's not in use by boats but if something comes along please do give way and please do give way with good grace. As far as boating and fishing on the broads um, do come along a lot of anglers like to come and fish on the broads but you do need a license and you need that from the environment agency we are quite unusual in the broads that we still have a closed season. And the other thing you can't do is fish from a boat as you go along. We do, as you see there, have radar speed checks, we have radar guns. We don't use them very often, but the rangers are encouraged to make sure uh, that people are complying with the speed limits. They range from three, four, five and six miles an hour, depending on the width of the river. It's really important that you keep to those. Wash is a big problem. Wash is the waves that the boat makes. Always look behind you and see if there's wash. It could be hitting the banks, it could be affecting people who are moored up, it could be affecting people who are cooking, and it can swamp the whole nests of birds and kill a number of ducklings that's been done. Just look at this. It can cause danger and it can really upset other people's holidays. You don't necessarily know that wash is coming because you haven't heard the boat or there's nothing in the case of canoeists that you can do about it except ride it out. So please, please make your own holiday safe and quiet and enjoyable and don't spoil anybody else's. The maximum fine is a thousand pounds and there's also other offences of not navigating with care and caution, just like on the road, you've got to drive sensibly. It's the only time that you might not see us smiling at you. Here's a few do's and don'ts. Don't navigate at night. Make sure you're moored up before night time comes. You're not rushing around. Imagine being out here at night. Quite dangerous, a lot of hazards, not a nice place to be. Another thing is swimming. It may be hot, it may be beautiful weather, but the rivers are still cold. They're wild places, there's weed, they're dangerous. So swimming is for swimming pools and beaches, certainly not in the broads. Please don't be tempted to do that. Another thing is barbecues. Would you light a barbecue on your car bonnet? I don't think you would. But we get a lot of people who get these portable, disposable barbecues and light them on the deck of their boat. Um, you don't want the boat to go up in smoke, so obviously you don't do that. At a mooring, we sometimes provide um, small paved areas for barbecues. Don't do it on the capping, the wooden bit, next to your boat that you've moored to, because it burns into that. Another thing please be careful of is dogs. Um, every year we get dogs falling in and then people dive in after it. I've already told you it's not a good idea to go swimming, but obviously to dive in after your dog's not a good idea. Keep an eye on the children, make sure they've still got buoyancy aids on, and don't let them run all round the roof and the deck. A lot of people are safety conscious while they're going along, they moor up, switch off, and that can be a dangerous time. Getting on and off the boat is, a, is the time to really watch your footing and the time to still be wearing your buoyancy aid or your life jacket. Hello there, one final thing, drink. Please, when you go to the pub in the evening, come back, get back on your boat very carefully. You don't want to have too much drink and then try and get back on the boat, it's tricky. When you're helming, don't have too much, you can drink, but ideally don't have anything, but be careful. Have an enjoyable holiday and a good time. Cheers then, bye.
I guess it's important as well actually planning your route. I think you call it passage planning. I suppose with these tides, with the rising waters and falling waters, it's essential that you know you can actually get through a bridge when you're planning to get there. It certainly is, and you will find all that information in your broadcaster. You, it gives you the low waters. You need to plan to get to your destination before dark. Have a plan B in case you need to go to a different mooring so you've got time to adjust your, your time of travel to get to a mooring that is free. Yeah, that makes sense.